Gaming is one of those things where it just seems like you have endless options to choose from. And for most people, that ends up being true. There's always new games coming out for any type of player, whether that's a full-on AAA release or some smaller indie projects. Whether you play casually, competitively, or just have those specific genres that you gravitate to, there's always something to play. Sometimes you want to branch out, play a game or genre that you haven't tried before, or maybe you're just trying some more obscure indie titles. Regardless of what type of player you are, there's probably some titles or series that you find yourself coming back to. Sometimes those games are genuinely good, and sometimes you've just been a fan of them for so long that they turn into something else. Games you hate to love. Maybe you love a series because of its story, gameplay, or plain old nostalgia. Whatever it is, no matter how the newest update or game in the series is received, you find yourself still buying it and still playing it. So let's go through examples of games that you might just hate that you love. Overwatch 2 is really just Overwatch 1 with a new coat of paint, and that coat of paint is more so just a clear coat, it's not really any different. Blizzard took the first game offline and updated it to be Overwatch 2. The changes to the gameplay are nothing we haven't already seen before, hero reworks, buffs, nerfs. Realistically, Overwatch 2 didn't need to be branded as a sequel. Based on it taking over the original game, it was just more of an expansion. Blizzard promised so many things that never got delivered. A standalone story mode, talent trees for heroes, and a whole bunch of content that we just never got. What we got instead was a glorified shop update. There was no new major gameplay innovations, there was a new mode, a couple maps, heroes, as well as making the game smaller, by moving the game from a 6v6 to a 5v5 matchup. The biggest change you'd see would be in how you acquired new items. In Overwatch 1, you could get loot boxes, which gave you a chance at some new items. Overwatch 2 favors the more modern system of a battle pass and an in-game shop for you to spend real money on. After some time after Overwatch 2 got released, they announced that they were completely axing the single player in story mode, and focusing instead on multiplayer. They would still release story missions here and there, but nothing compared to what was promised. The whole promise of what Overwatch 2 would be was a lie. But what we do have in terms of gameplay for Overwatch is a ton of fun. There's different heroes, different abilities, some are better than others, but they're all unique enough to where there is a huge variety. The fluidity of how the game feels, how each hero plays, and the teamwork required, when it all comes together with the right team, Overwatch is just a ton of fun. Playing competitive with a full squad of friends, pushing your way through the maps, constantly talking on comms, and finding your way to victory is addicting. I can't personally say that I play this game much alone or that I enjoy it playing alone, but with the right people, you can have a blast for hours on end. The main reason you might hate to love this game is because of the flaws mentioned earlier. The lack of content that was promised to us, the absurd prices of items in the shop, and no real progression other than your ranked system. It can really take you out of the fun. Even with the flaws present in Overwatch 2, I still find myself wanting to play it sometimes. It's just one of those games that when you play it with the right people and everything clicks, you find yourself wanting to keep playing. You hate to love it because the gameplay in and of itself is really great but Blizzard just really dropped the ball in releasing this Overwatch 2 update. Halo is one of those series that needs no introduction. At one point, it was a juggernaut of the FPS genre, put in the same category as series like Call of Duty or Battlefield. Halo was highly regarded from Combat Evolved all the way through Reach. Once Bungie left the helm of the franchise, 343 Industries took over and with the following two releases of Halo 4 and 5 being received less than stellar overall. Halo Infinite was set to be the triumphant return of the series, taking back control of the Master Chief in the main campaign, as well as offering a main multiplayer component. The game seemed like it would be a slam dunk. Delay after delay started to get people to worry, but eventually Halo Infinite would fully release, starting with the multiplayer first and then the main campaign shortly after. The main campaign of the Halo games always center around this expansive story and universe. As previously mentioned, Halo CE through Reach, story and gameplay wise were all really well received. From the main campaign to the customization of your multiplayer Spartans, the series really started to take a turn once 4 released. The art direction shift and the less than stellar campaign turned some people off, 
but multiplayer was still a ton of fun in 4. Halo 5 would come out and most of the fan base would start to turn on the developers. Halo 5 is in my opinion the worst Halo game in the mainline series. The campaign is not at all what was advertised and you really hardly got to play as Master Chief himself. In Halo 5's campaign, Cortana was somehow back from the dead and your main focus was finding her. The multiplayer was fine, but something just felt off. There was advanced movement in Halo 5, which made sense in the context of super soldiers, but it felt unwelcome in Halo, personally. Halo 5 also featured loot boxes to unlock items for use in the Warzone mode, as well as customization items for your Spartan. The game left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, and the question that remained at that point was where do we go from here? Then comes the first teaser for Infinite, a return to the more familiar art style that people have come to love, as well as Master Chief making his return. Everything seemed to be looking upward for the franchise at this point. Nothing looked really bad during pre-release aside from maybe Craig, but that would be ironed out. Delay after delay would ensue for the game, and while some people had hopes, the game didn't launch in a state that anybody would want. Multiplayer was released first for Infinite and a campaign shortly after. The story of Infinite was kind of basic, but it was a welcome change from what came before. Infinite is essentially a soft reboot of the franchise. The main campaign takes place on an open world where you would get to choose where to go and what to do. The main missions themselves are pretty linear, but there are side objectives to complete as well. While it will positively receive, you would soon start to see how much content was actually missing from Infinite. In the main multiplayer, things were missing like core game modes, a proper progression system, and not a lot of maps at launch. The multiplayer would take quite some time to get into a good state, and even almost after two years after the release, there's still a lot missing. It's leagues better than where it started, but there's a lot of work to still be done. The customization in Halo is something that everybody looks forward to, each game adding more and more items for you to customize on your Spartan. Halo Infinite definitely has the most robust customization in the series, but there's a lack of reward for playing. Infinite favors the battle pass and season shop system that a lot of modern games utilize. And while that's fine in theory, there's no way to unlock customization items by doing in-game challenges aside from the weekly rewards. There's no cool visor for getting a thousand wins, no cool helmet for beating the game on lasso. You really start to see how much that this game is geared towards spending money on the shop and the battle pass. Even with the content added to Halo since its release, it's still a series that's fallen so far from where it once stood. But with the cool items you can unlock to customize your Spartan with, a variety of weapons, and the overall feeling of the Halo games, they're just something else. Even with the less than stellar games in the series, the gameplay was always fluid and fun and it flowed really well. Even if Halo is not nearly as good as it was, it still has that spark, that uniqueness that keeps people coming back. It's a series that I myself have loved since the very first game, and I find myself wanting to come back and play. Maybe it's nostalgia, but maybe there really is something special about this game and this franchise. But with the past few releases not being as good as they should have been, I still find that this series is one that even with its flaws, I still have a ton of fun with. I hate the way that the franchise has been going, but I still love the gameplay and the story of the Halo franchise, and that's what keeps me coming back. If Halo is a series that needed no introduction, then COD is on another level. The series has seen a mainline release year after year without miss. COD seems to always be one of the top selling games year after year. Regardless of how many posts on Twitter or Reddit you see saying how bad the game is, COD is still a juggernaut in the FPS genre. COD is unique in the sense that it can cater to literally any playstyle or skill level. Whether you're a casual gamer just trying to play a couple hours here and there, or a die-hard competitive player, COD has something for everyone. Each game in the series has a main campaign, and they're always entertaining and fun to play through, but after a time or two playing it, you really don't go back to it that much. But that's also not why people really buy COD. Most everyone buys a Call of Duty game for the multiplayer. Every single COD game, even the bad ones, excel in their gameplay. From settings from World War II all the way to super futuristic titles, every single COD game feels good. No matter if you're new to the games or a returning player, you can easily hop into a lobby and just play. And that's why COD has so much staying power. Literally anyone can pick it up. 
Even if the modern CODs have shifted towards the Battle Pass and Seasonal Shop system, releasing more paid cosmetic content than anyone could ever purchase, they still have an amazing feel that you come to expect in terms of gameplay. From your movement, to your customization options, to how the guns feel, COD just feels really good year after year. The modern COD games seem to not add as much new content in terms of maps as they used to, but even when the game lacks some content, you can easily just pick it up and have mindless fun. And that's what makes it a series that you hate to love. You hate it because every new release and every new season seems to add more and more paid items into the shop, further showcasing how Activision is super money hungry. But the games always play really well. Even Vanguard, commonly said to be the worst title in the series, played really well. Even if I didn't personally enjoy it, you have to acknowledge that the gameplay and how the game felt was really well done. And that goes for pretty much every title in the franchise. They all feel phenomenal. You can just stop playing COD for three months and then come back into it like nothing happened. They're just that accessible. Even their Battle Royale Warzone follows in the same steps. Even if the map isn't great or there just isn't enough new stuff to do, the gameplay of COD translates really, really well, whether it be a Battle Royale or the core multiplayer. You love COD because of the core gameplay. It's always really well done and fun. It's addicting. It's a mindless, turn your brain off and shoot things type of game. But COD's going to keep releasing year after year, because it's a franchise that just prints money. The only way that COD's going to stop releasing a game is if the developers decide that they're not going to make a game anymore. But that's not going to happen because of how much money that this franchise makes. So you're going to continue to keep seeing COD games come out every single year, and a lot of people are going to continue to buy them. The franchise has a lot of name recognition, but it wouldn't have that staying power if the games didn't feel good too. You can't have a long-lasting franchise with having some redeeming qualities in it. And those redeeming qualities are what keep people coming back year after year. No matter if you're playing a COD game set in World War II or even one of the advanced movement games like Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3, the games always feel really good, the gunplay is always really well done, which is why people continue to buy the games. If it didn't have anything going for it, the franchise wouldn't stick around. Whether you're just playing the core arena shooter that is the multiplayer, or you're translating over to Battle Royale or even the competitive scene, no matter what, the gameplay in COD is just really well done. That's why you keep coming back to it. The game could be perceived badly in terms of its setting or how the monetization is going, but you keep coming back because no matter what, it feels really good. It's an addicting game at its core. That's what makes COD a game franchise that you hate that you love. You hate the way the franchise is going in terms of its monetization practices, its lack of content, but you love the way the game feels, and it keeps dragging you back in regardless. What are some franchises or games that you hate that you love? Let me know in the comments down below and let's continue this discussion. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!